fired up about today's podcast show. The Mark Haney Show is taking a little uh, twist um, in, a, in a way that I think is going to broaden out the appeal to our audience. Our audience, I think a lot of you are entrepreneurs. Um, others of you are just success oriented. You have big dreams, you've got goals. And, and a part of that is really being healthy, right? Healthy mind, healthy body, um, healthy approach, holistic approach to succeeding in life. And so I brought on my main man, Rick Spencer. Rick is the vice president of Haney Biz, which means he basically does all the work. And uh, I come up with uh, a lot of the ideas and he he sort of straightens them out. But today he's going to help um, uh, facilitate this change in our uh, in our process in our process, I guess. But more moreover, the the delivery to you. Um, we're going to open up this lane of the holistic entrepreneur. And so, uh, Rick, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for everything you do in helping entrepreneurs uh, in our in our world. Um, but um, Today, you get to uh, turn the tables and, and ask me some questions. So maybe to start off with, maybe uh, a little bit about you and what you, uh, what you see for the viewers today. Yeah, thanks for inviting me as part of the journey, Mark. Um, it's really exciting to be here. I think you know this topic and developing, like you said, a lane for health with entrepreneurs couldn't be more timely, right? With all the challenges that entrepreneurs are facing now, in addition to what they've historically faced, um, you know, this is really great for the audience and for the community. And, and I think, like you said, a holistic entrepreneur, you know, there's plenty of content out there that talks about your pitch deck and fundraising and, you know, your value proposition and, you know, the lean startup process and, 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 right. Um, but we forget about the health piece, right. And, you know, I've been thinking a little bit about this. I mean, I know you're a patriot and, uh, you know, thinking about the declaration of independence and it's, you know, we should be able to pursue life, liberty, and you know the pursuit of happiness. And without life, we can't do any of that, right? And I think it's the same with business, right? I mean, without a healthy mind, a healthy body, and a healthy foundation for your life, how can you succeed at business? Yeah, but don't you think that a lot of times we forget that? I mean, especially early on, before you've maybe had a chance to... Um, to achieve some of those early wins, uh, you are basically all in on your business and everything else in your life, everything else, including your health, maybe even sometimes your family, these kind of things end up suffering and then you pour everything you have in order to survive. And, you know, if, if those uh, other areas of your life don't work out so well, you start having setbacks. I mean, it does drag down the business. It can kind of be like a vicious cycle. And, uh, you know, that's not good for anybody. No, I mean, there, there's a reason that, you know, the United States leads, you know, all industrial nations as far as healthcare expenses, right? We're very reactive with our health. And entrepreneurs, they just accelerate that, right? Because they're laser focused on this business and this dream and this vision. And, you know, so most people in America forget about their health and are reactive anyways. And now if you're chasing this dream, it's, it's very easy to lose sight, but it's foundational, right? It's, it's critical. And I thought we could start today because I think, you know, all the, the audience knows you very well, Mark. And I think when they look at you, they would say, look, this guy works out twice a day. I mean, he's 57. He's in great shape. You know, he eats pretty healthy. He's got great family values. I mean, you know, the, the, the checklist would be pretty compelling to say, you're a healthy guy. And so maybe to set the stage, you can talk a little bit about, you know, what health has meant to you during this entrepreneurial journey, right? When mm -hmm. you were chasing the dream and chasing the vision to grow the companies like Northern Video and Placer TV and those things, you know, what, what did health mean? Yeah, great question. I think it's important, too, to point out that we are still going to be focused uh, at some level on pitch decks and raising money and selling stuff and the other things associated with business in other podcasts. Those are still lanes we are pursuing uh, most most definitely as we, as we grow the Sacramento Growth Factory and so on. But to answer your question, question specifically, uh, this is going to be a journey for me of discovery, right? So as I... Uh, attempted to survive each of these uh, businesses over the last several years, health has taken a back seat. And I, and I think that even though I'm known a little bit as a, as a CrossFit guy and a guy that stays healthy, um, in reality, it's taken a back seat 
to survival. And, uh, and I think, you know, if I go early in my uh, career, I've always been somebody who, who went to the gym or, or got up and, and, uh, and maybe went for a run. Uh, but it wasn't until after selling my companies about 10 years ago, um, I think it was about seven or eight years ago, where I finally admitted to myself, you know what, maybe I should go to uh, a group exercise class. I never really wanted anybody telling me what to do. Right. I coached football. I played high school sports. I felt like I knew enough. But when I began um, training with other people, professionals, uh, the whole world opened up to me about all the different things I don't know. And so I think as we share this journey, it's going to be more of the same. Uh, me learning, you've heard me learn how to be an angel investor on this show, and I've figured out a way. Well, this is a little bit of you seeing through my eyes what I'm learning. So I do not profess at, in any way to be a health expert, but I do think maybe it'll be fun and interesting to see uh, to sort of live the journey through my eyes. But I will tell you straight up that I lived more of an unhealthy lifestyle over this la over the, over my journey as an entrepreneur, right? I ended up uh, uh, becoming an entrepreneur in my uh, mid to late 30s and almost went out of business. Um, the stress associated with uh, surviving and having two little kids and you know, even marital problems at some level, even though I've been married for 35 years to the, to the woman of my dreams. It's like, look, stress happens. And what do you do to cope with that? You, you basically put out fires many of the times. You end up putting out fires, whether it be uh, relationships or maybe health and so on. Luckily, I always got up early and went for a run to burn off steam, um, which I think was the one healthy aspect uh, from a physical health standpoint, and even emotionally. That's one of the things that I was uh, comfortable doing early on as somebody who played sports. I was always a, a get up and go for a run guy, but that's not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, getting up and go for a run is, is helpful, but it's not the answer, uh, in, in and of itself. So for me, uh, I ended up having trouble sleeping. So it was, uh, and relaxing at the end of the night. So I, you know, people that know me pretty well know I'm the kind of guy that likes to crack open a, a beer at the end of the day. And, uh, that helps me unwind and ultimately, uh, has helped me go to sleep at night and you know uh, one beer turns into three next thing you know shoot I've got my own little uh, routine around uh, unwinding at the end of the night which is that's not a healthy lifestyle never never drinking a lot but drinking regularly that's not healthy for anybody and uh, so I think this COVID thing it, it's been a blessing in disguise because as much as I've been on sort of a uh, a health trajectory change in my workouts, right, from group classes to CrossFit and, and becoming uh, in shape, if you will, um, I still, you know, started a podcast. That's stressful. Uh, becoming an investor, that's had some stress associated with it for me because I'm driven. Um, so I never really uh, cracked some of my uh, bad habits. Uh, and so now um, with the COVID crisis, I've decided, okay, this is my time. And it's all based upon this vision statement that I wrote about seven or eight years ago, just before I started the podcast. Now I am in the process after seven or eight years of uh, trying to kind of live in a certain way, but not really doing it to uh, what I know is the best of my ability. Now I'm attacking it a little bit more forcefully with the, uh, with the decision to discover um, how healthy I can be. And uh, if that's helpful to others, uh, you know what? I'm going to share it on my show. Yeah. So everyone has, you know, different motivations. And I'm curious about, you know, kind of what were some of the signals? You know, COVID obviously slowed things down and maybe gave you more time to think or be introspective or maybe more time to be stressed, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you think about, you know, this next kind of chapter in your journey on health, you know, you had these routines of exercise and, you know, there were a, a lot of, you know, foundational pieces there, but there was more that you, that was identified that you thought I need to be pursuing more. So, you know, as people think about the start of a journey like this, you know, what, what were some of the feelings, the, the, the signals, the experiences that really woke you up to say, there's more I should be doing? I'd say the overwhelming feeling that prompted this change is guilt, uh, which sounds kind of funny. Um, but you, when you know you're not treating yourself the way 
you're self-sabotaging yourself. There's, for me, there was a feeling of guilt. As I mentioned, I wrote out a, a vision statement. Uh, people know I have a mission statement about creating opportunity for my family, friends, community. We talk about that all the time on the show. It's, it's a mantra here around Haiti Biz. But I don't often talk about my vision statement, which is really what, you know, we talk about the 100 millionaire business partners in the backyard. But the overarching vision statement is me being the finest athletic and life coach that my great grandchildren ever experience. And what does that mean? That means my vision is really around being an 85 year old man throwing batting practice to little kids. And, you know, I, I can really visualize that. And it's something I talk about. Uh, among my uh, among my family a little bit, and I've talked about it maybe once or twice on the show. But if that's really um, what I want, if that's really what I envision, then why am I not doing the things, all the things, or as much of the things as I know how to do or can discover to uh, to make that more possible, right? So, um, and that's re- and that's physical health, that's longevity, that's lifespan, right? A lot of I think the average age of um, of a, of a person in the United States is in their mid to late seventies. And if you're one of those people that maybe is an entrepreneur that lives a high stress lifestyle, you know, that doesn't, uh, bode well for your longevity. So you've got to be able to control your stress. You've got to put the right things, uh, in your body. You've got to be able to put the right people, uh, around you. And I think I've done some of that, but really I felt guilty because I wasn't doing it to the best of my ability. And I, I think today, uh, I'm a couple months in, and I'm doing it, I would say, at least closer to the best of my ability. Um, and it really has relieved some of the guilt, and it's almost like that vision or dream is like almost like turning into color, right? From black and white, it's like becoming more real. I almost believe it a little bit more, um, but I but the guilt is gone, right? And I think a lot of us we shouldn't feel guilty anyway, right? We all have, you know. I don't think guilt, um, no matter any mistakes we've made in our life, I don't think guilt is helpful for any of us. But I think it's something that I'll admit to you. Um, has weighed me down a little bit and it's what prompted, you know, in this, in this little break that we've had with COVID where, you know, a lot of our lifestyles and routines have been disrupted in some ways. Uh, it's really been the opportunity for me to face my guilt and, uh, and now coming out with it publicly on our show is, uh, I'll say it's therapeutic in some way. (laughs) Well, I, I really enjoyed the, you know, the story you share about this personal vision statement, because I think, you know, it's, it's very easy, you know, going back to entrepreneurs and how driven and committed they are, you know, to have the vision statement for the company and to, you know, to have everything around the business. But, you know, if, if you don't have your health, you don't have your wealth, right? Like if you don't, if you aren't healthy yourself, you can't take care of business or other people. So, um, I, you know, I think the audience really needs to hear that as taking time for that personal vision statement. Um, is critical to starting a journey like this and to, you know, really succeeding in life. And so, um, and then checking in with your feelings. So this, this feeling of guilt, um, you know, using that as a motivation, right? Cause it could be easy to, to actually let that feeling, um, transcend you into a worser position, right? That, oh, well, but I'm too old or, you know, I missed my opportunity or no one cares. And so that guilt could go the other direction. And so using that guilt to motivate you to make a positive change, um, I think is, is really important for the audience to hear as well. So, you know, health means so many different things to, to different people. Tell us about, you know, what you started now with this motivation. You know, you had the vision statement, you had the feelings, you were motivated to make change, you know, where did you start looking? What did you start exploring? Who did you invite, um, you know, into this journey? Now, interesting question. So, uh, one of the first things I did, and I got to thank my, uh, former storytelling soulmate, uh, Brian Oliver, who, uh, who encouraged me to listen to other people's podcasts. I've always been a, a, a reader or an audio book person. And I think there's different books that I, that I've read around the subject, which, uh, you know, but I wasn't able to com- I wasn't ready to commit yet. I read a book about living more healthy, maybe even live it, uh, read it a few times and, or listen to it a few times. And it, it would motivate me to some extent, began listening to podcasts 
And I think there was one podcast in particular that, uh, that ended up prompting me to somehow surf over to a guy named uh, Ben Greenfield, who is really a, uh, a health podcast uh, person that I've come to uh, sort of enjoy. And he's a wealth of knowledge. And I think he uh, and his podcast prompted me to sort of, I guess, make the change. And so what did I end up doing? I ended up taking notes. I ended up thinking about this. And I'm one of these people that... Uh, I believe in some things, you may have heard this before, write it down and revisit it, revisit it. And so I've written down my, my vision statement. I've, I've got the vision board. I've been thinking about it. Um, but now, uh, what prompts you to do that is, um, my wife started talking about it. So I've really never had these conversations before with anybody. And then she is, uh, She's approaching 55. She'll turn 55 maybe even after this, uh, yeah, maybe even before this podcast. So, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> She'll turn 55 here shortly, which probably before this podcast airs. And she began sort of having some of these things. Where, and she's in great shape and works out and um, lives a health, much healthier lifestyle than I do. But she began to kind of talk about it. And I'm like, you know what? I've been thinking about it, too. And I shared with her. It was, I, think, I think the step was just telling one person. I feel a little bit guilty or not. And, and really I feel a lot guilty. And so I started sharing with her how I was feeling as much as you, you know, my own wife, I've been insecure about these feelings for so long because even her, you're in great shape, Mark. I'm like in the best shape of anybody that I know, you know, in my, my friend group, but inside I'm still guilty. I feel guilty. And so I began to confess to her my feelings, and she was feeling like she was in a, a position where she was wanting to sort of redouble her efforts as well. Um, and I think her feelings, we almost like jumped off the ledge together, if you will. Are you saying that you might want to commit and I might want to commit? Yeah. And I, when I commit, I am freaking extreme, right? So I think even she is like, holy cow, Mark's getting pretty extreme again. Oh, here he goes again type thing. So I'm... I end up taking things and be and obsessing on them a little bit more than uh, I'd say most of the population. So maybe even more than her. Um, and so I don't know that I'm an inspiration for her, but I, at least I feel like I have uh, a partner to talk about it with. And we both have sort of confessed a little bit about how we've felt. And so we're going through uh, different journeys, uh, but uh, with no uh, strings attached, um, letting each other sort of uh, live their own journey. But I've got somebody else who's, who's got a, uh, a slightly different journey. And, but I have someone at least to talk to, uh, kind of on a, a nightly basis, how'd it go today and all that kind of thing. So I would give her, uh, I guess the credit or the, uh, I would say she's what prompted me to go, well, if she's doing it, I've been wanting to do this for seven years, right? So finally I'm doing it. I, uh, the podcast is no longer overwhelming me. I now have you to run Haney biz and I can really be the visionary or chief dreaming officer. And now that you've uh, productized our offering here, it's like the stress has been lifted off of me. I have no excuses for not being able to commit to a healthy lifestyle. So excuses have been eliminated. So here I am. <laughs> yeah. So that shared experience, it sounds like what you're explaining, right? I mean, it, you know, there's plenty of research that shows that, you know, if you hang around with people that aren't healthy, you become unhealthy. Or, you know, if you hang around with people that are healthy, you're a little more healthier. But it, it's so easy, you know, in the health, I'm guilty of this, right? It's, it's easy to rationalize with yourself. I don't need to work out or I don't need to eat healthy. Right. But if you have a shared experience with someone, you know, there's going to be questions and you're going to be talking. There's even element of partnership and accountability uh, you know, that really can take you to the next level. Yeah. And I think one of the things for me is I talk about this being a discovery. Uh, you're younger than me, Rick. You're closer to 40. At 57, you know, what we learned about health in the 70s and 80s, picture me playing high school football, it's like work harder. That's the only answer. And I still believe that much of society uh, doesn't get the mantra that I have that my daughter and I share together, that the harder you work, the luckier you get. I still believe in that. And I think much of society um, will never embrace that. Um, and in entrepreneurship, that's a key. And I think in success, there's a there's sort of uh, certain factors like that and philosophies like that that are important, but you know what the things that we may have learned in the 70s or 80s 
weren't necessarily true. Hard work was true, but just hard work uh, is not the uh, the best way to get in shape. It's an important factor, but if you're hard working the, in the wrong way, you can hurt yourself. You see that in CrossFit all the time. People are getting hurt in CrossFit because they're doing it incorrectly. It's no uh, it's nothing negative on CrossFit. It's the way we attack CrossFit. Work harder, work harder, work harder. Instead of uh, as fast as you can do it correctly or as hard as you can do it correctly. The same thing goes with the other areas of health in our life, uh, whether it be relationships or, uh, you know, sleep. To me, I've broken, I've tried to create this into sort of a framework of how I'm going to uh, attack this, right? As the guy that is uh, trying to be a little bit, you know, I'm not the most organized, but I know if I'm going into something important, I've got to create structure. And so I've broken it up into sort of four categories. Number one, sleep, right? I've got to get my sleep because if I don't want, and I think entrepreneurs are like, we, we're not supposed to sleep, right? I was taught sleep's not a big deal. Now that I'm 57, it's always been a big deal and I just never wanted to admit it. So sleep for sure is a big deal. And then if you think about this, uh, Exercise. The way, we talked about that a little bit. The way you exercise is different than the way uh, is the best way to do it is at 57 or at any age is different than what we learned in the 70s or 80s or the 90s or even maybe last year. Right? It's changing. Science is, you know, uh, there's new discoveries every day about the best way to, uh, to, to, to live a long time and live a healthy uh, exercise program. And then nutrition, of course, has changed, right? So one day, uh, you know, the carnivore diet is, uh, is competing with the, uh, the vegetarians and the vegans and, you know, who's right and who's wrong. And that's completely different than what I learned when I was a kid. Stuff that I thought was healthy growing up no longer is healthy. Um, and the right answer is that it's different for all of us, right? There's no one diet plan that's for everybody. It's based upon a lot of different stuff. So nutrition is the, uh, is the third, uh, piece of my, uh, I guess, framework. And then the fourth really is the way you think, right? The thoughts. And I think that, uh, and I don't know that one is necessarily more important than any of the other, but I do think that controlling our thoughts, minimizing our stress level, keeping our distress level down is an important part of uh, success in any realm. It's an important part of getting to sleep. It's an important part of uh, getting a good workout in. It, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to uh, eat the wrong stuff and drink the wrong stuff when you're stressed. It's like, dang, you got to be thinking right. So I'm trying to break up my uh, my plan uh, and my uh, discovery process into those four areas. So let's go through the framework. I really okay. like it. It's helpful kind of one by one. So let's start with sleep. You know, what, what have you learned? What are you testing? What's working? What are the challenges when you've, you know, really tried to invest in, you know, you said sleep was always important, but I just ignored it, right? Or I didn't give it a priority. So, you know, is that just, oh, I went from six hours to eight hours or, you know, what does that mean? Get yeah. better sleep. Well, it's been a, uh, I've had this uh, continuous discovery. So for me, um, I played around with that over the over the years, and I went from a couple of Bud Lights to try to put me in a relaxed mode, but then you end up waking up in the middle of the night because alcohol is uh, turns into sugar, and it's causing you to wake up. It's dumb, right? I've always know I've known that for more than uh, six months, right? I've known that for a while, but I haven't prompted myself to do anything about it. I know that uh, taking stuff like uh, Motrin PM is super hard on your gut. So, you know, taking s or Tylenol PM and these things are unhealthy for you. So I have dabbled in, uh, you know, those areas as well. And those are not uh, helpful. Um, but one thing that uh, is for sure is, uh, you know, the change, I guess the change that I think I made that was most helpful is... I haven't been drinking alcohol at the end of the night and that's been, I think a, a help and I'm not against drinking alcohol, but for me, because it was a regular thing, I decided to cut it out for, uh, for some period of time. And I think that that was kind of like a, a, a significant step, 
Um, but that caused me to also think, I, th- I guess prior to that, I decided to cut out sugar. So unless it's in, in fruits and, uh, and natural foods, like, like in fruits. Um, so I've cut out sugar instead of, uh, work out, uh, burn off as many calories as you want. And so you can eat whatever you want and drink whatever you want. That's been my lifestyle for 30 years. Work out super hard. You can eat anything. Um, uh, well, still working out hard, but not putting uh, the carbs in the body at the end, you know, putting some carbs in the body, but not like loading up with sugar and cookies and Bud Light and sort of things that might cause me to wake up in the middle of the night. Um, So that's helped me. Um, I think, though, that um, if I've discovered anything, uh, and I'm still in my quest, uh, in my journey, um, I discovered it at uh, at a farmer's market. Um, something that's been helpful for me over the, and this is over the last 60 days. And there's a lot of other, uh, things I'm in, I'm going to try, but I feel like I've almost solved my problem. So I'm a little bit like, okay, maybe I should just sort of hit pause and, and play through this. But I think one of the biggest changes is putting a couple of drops of, uh, CB, CBD oil, uh, in my mouth and holding it in my mouth for a minute before I go to bed and that relaxes me and it puts me to sleep. I, oh, I also started taking some uh, melatonin at the end of the night, which I guess is a really uh, healthy um, additive. And so that combination has, uh, I've been sleeping like a baby, if you will, uh, even though I consume a lot of other liquids, water and so on. Um, I end up getting up in the middle of the night and going to the bathroom. Uh, other than that, I don't get up in the middle of the night. And when I, uh, I ended up going right back to sleep uh, pretty easily, and so I feel like I'm I'm hitting that balance mode. And uh, and I'd always thought CBD, you know, I never really understood the the difference between CBD. You know, I'm not I'm not a guy that uh, dabbles in marijuana or anything like that. So I didn't really ever try to understand it, and uh, just thought, oh, CBD sounds like something close to marijuana. Well, it's it's legal. It's uh, it's got very good. Um, things about it for health. Um, I've, I've done a little bit of studying on it and decided to, uh, start, uh, putting it into my body. Um, even rubbing on, I had a sore knee for a while and I rubbing and they've got cream that you can rub on your leg. I discovered this about two months ago and, uh, my knee's feeling better. So I'm really becoming this, uh, minor belief. I was, I'm not going to call myself a, a big advocate for CBD. I'm going to say I have m- Signs uh, of, uh, of hope uh, in the realm of CBD being very helpful for, uh, for, you know, getting to sleep. So, so it sounds like, you know, it, it wasn't just, oh, I need to sleep more, but the, the setup to get better sleep was really important. I think so. I think uh, for sure, um, you know, some of the things I needed to do, I think some of the things about having a, a, a Bud Light at the end of the night, there's not... I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's just, it's bad when that's your crutch. I mean, I, I, I still, th- when that's your crutch and then, ah, you know what? I'm not tired yet. I better have another one, right? If that's your crutch, that's bad news. So I think eliminating that, um, that uh, was very helpful. And then I, I think these other things that also, uh, I guess, are bad habits, if you will, to have, uh, those are helpful because they end up being these crutches. And I think a lot of times we're afraid to, get rid of the crutches because that's my crutch. I got to get up in the morning and work out. I got to get up and go to the office. I got to, I have commitments tomorrow and I don't want to lose my crutch. So for me, it was the decision to kind of like go, okay, I'm going to get rid of the crutches and, uh, you know, I, I might have some bad days and, you know, surprisingly it wasn't that tough. <laughs> I mean, it was been, uh, it's been pretty almost uh, inspirational for it's like, Oh, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. And, um, and so it's been helpful, but I also, you know, I'm not, I'm not burning the candle late at night. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm one of those people that is, tries to be disciplined about going to bed consistently and things like that, because there's no question. I mean, I think we were intended to go to bed, uh, you know, when it gets dark and wake up when the sun rises. So that's always been sort of my, uh, approach. And so I, I haven't had to change that, which I'm really happy about. Yeah. Well, there's, we could have a whole podcast on sleep, I'm sure, but uh, know, yeah. That, and we may, maybe we'll have yeah. guests that, uh, help support where, uh, where I'm a novice. Right. Yeah. It's great. Cause yeah, we, we could talk about data and, and other things, but, um, you know, so we've covered the first kind of pillar of your framework sleep. Yeah. Um, the next one is exercise and, 
you know, um, you talked about attacking and, you know, there's a, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, have been on the show that talk about being extreme. And um, it's interesting because you mentioned, you know, oh, my philosophy is just work out a ton and then I could eat and, you know, behave, you know, the way I want as I have, you know, um, excess, right, you know. And so I, I've seen the research, and, but you're also starting to talk about, you know, age appropriate exercise. And I think that's really interesting because I've seen research about, you know, especially entrepreneurs that will take it to the extreme, right? They're so competitive that, you know, they don't just start ex exercising the gym. They want to the, do the Ironman, right? They, they want to go and, and do the, the hardest things. And, you know, seeing the research about people that do these ultra marathons and Ironmans and, you know, how they have, you know, on a cardiogram, similar uh, r report as like heart disease, right? And so there is a balance, there is appropriateness. And so, you know, you've been, I, I think if any of those pillars, people would think exercise, you already had that checked off, right? Um, so what have you learned? What are you exploring new uh, to help you with that pillar? Well, I think the one thing is, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. A guy could be ripped and lean and maybe he's a little unhealthy on the inside or even maybe emotionally. So um, I think one of the th first things you have to do is sort of take inventory. Mm -hmm. What am I uh, pretty comfortable in? And for me, yeah, pretty comfortable with cardio and uh, body weight and, you know, strength and things like that. Some things that you might be, maybe outwardly notice, but I do think that any of us, um, probably should do that, take that inventory. And that probably ought to require that you, uh, go get some blood work done, maybe go get some other tests done, talk to a professional, because I think, um, really taking inventory about where you're at in your journey and that, and maybe step, set up a step-by-step -step process so that you can, you can take a ho holistic approach to your, to your health, not just entrepreneurship, but your health approach. Um, and I think some of that, uh, it ties over to the exercise because I agree if you just go out and do an Ironman, um, or a triathlon or something like that, and you're out of shape, probably not a wise move. Um, for me, I already was in pretty good shape. Um, so I had maybe a few less adjustments to make on the way that I worked out. But what I have done, uh, is I realized, look, I have fairly good flexibility and mobility so I can strike compared to, I started yoga, uh, is one of the things that I started doing over this last, uh, uh, month or two. And I realized, you know, at CrossFit, I'm, I'm a pretty flexible guy, but you go to yoga, I'm really not as flexible as I thought I was. CrossFit, I, compared to other CrossFit people, I, I fit right in, uh, in terms of being able to, uh, stretch and move my body and get the weights behind my head and all the different things that you do, uh, in terms of, uh, lifting weights and, and that sort of business. But, uh, in reality, the, the, uh, stabilization muscles and the, uh, the flexibility are areas where in many cases, CrossFit's not focused as heavily on there, at least the, the CrossFit place that I go to, we focus on that at some level, but yoga is a whole nother level. So for me, from a physical workout, uh, one of the things that's changed for me is, you know, I've made the decision. I want to, uh, it's more, instead of be competing in CrossFit, um, and being the best competitor that I could be in CrossFit. Now it's around how long can I live? How healthy can I do it? Can I do it injury free? You heard me kind of cry baby about my knee. Um, look, how do I do the exercises, uh, and the preventative maintenance so that my knee can heal and, and so on. So to me, a lot of that's been about um, mobility and, um, and core strength and, um, uh, and really some of the, uh, the small muscles in, in and around your knee that help strengthen it. So, uh, really the stabilization muscles and the flexibility are, are areas where you think that's not really even working out, but it is. And those things cannot be neglected. So I've redoubled my, uh, my approach through yoga, through, uh, I have a whole, uh, you know, if you, if anybody comes up to uh, Mark tank here, where we're at, I have a whole set of uh, things that I do to increase mobility and flexibility and, uh, and, uh, and, and build kind of like these little, uh, uh, strength exercises that have to do with the, uh, the smaller muscle strength. So, which doesn't really show up on the outside to the person, uh, you know, to the person who might notice you at the gym with the big muscles or not that I get noticed that much for that kind of thing, but, uh, <laughs> you know what, they don't show up on the outside, but those little things that you do, those are really what are, uh, are able to, uh, to do what you do. Like I, like my, I surprised my grandson the other day. 
uh, I, he's like, Grandpa, you know, uh, you know, he's saying he could beat me in a race. He's like eight years old. And he's a pretty quick little guy. And, and I said, okay, you know, and I would already worked out for the day. And he's at the house. And I'm like, okay, can you do this? And I jumped up on the counter at my house, standing, broad jump, up to 30-inch counter, uh, no warm-up, no nothing. And I jumped up on the counter 30 inches. And he was like, holy cow, Grandpa, right? So he was pretty surprised that I did that. But those kind of things can be done if you've got the stabilization muscles, if you've got the flexibility, the, and, and it's all that stuff that allows you to kind of go into a full sprint right now. If you aren't doing those little things, an old man's going to pull a hammy if he, uh, if he tries to do something like that, just like that. But I can do that stuff, and the reason is because I've had focus in these areas which really aren't the sexy part of working out. So for our YouTube audience, do you want to show off some of those explosive skills? we got a Yeah, right do you here. want me to land on one foot when I get up on the counter or two? That's the question, right, no Rick. no showing off, no showing off. <laughs> so, you know, I, I've spent some time, I'm not a CrossFitter, but, you know, I, I've been around boot camps and CrossFit communities, and, I've, and I really enjoy yoga. Um, th those are different communities, right? You know, overall, Very much so, right? Like, yes. I, I don't want to stereotype, but... I think you're, <laughs> you're correct. At least that's my knowledge as well. So, I mean... How has how has that helped you, you know, create balance or learn, you know, how to do those things differently when you're spending time with those, you know, yoga is is more than flexibility. It's about, you know, meditation and breath. I mean, if you're getting really into it, right? And, you know, uh, CrossFit is very competitive and extreme in some cases, right? And so, you know, what has that helped you with those two different communities as far as, you know, centering your approach or getting better at each one. I'm curious yeah. about that experience. You know what? The, the both communities are different. And I, I think, um, at some level, I'm just integrating myself into the yoga community. So i almost feel like an outsider, if you will. And, um, I called myself a beginner the other day and the, um, the yoga teacher, the owner of the gym kind of scolded me that, uh, you know, we're all beginners. You know, he tried to try to get me uh, thinking straight. So I'm like, okay, right. So they're trying to get in your head a little bit. Uh, the CrossFit people are a little bit more, uh, it's competitive in its own way. So those are different. I enjoy them both at, at, at different levels, but I think we're, uh, you know, if I could, uh, share what I think the biggest difference has been, it's been the decision to allocate the time. And so I can allocate more time based upon uh, other areas. You know, I, I've created my, uh, a situation for myself where I have a, little, a few more options uh, in terms of dedicating time. And, and that sparked from a book that uh, I think I may have mentioned on the show once or twice called Essentialism. It's the discipline pursuit of less. And I think as entrepreneurs, we, we want to be everything to everybody. And I hear this all the time. And I hear this stress, uh, whether we're doing hanging with Haney or other things, it's like, look, I'm doing the, and I think women maybe even have it more than, cause they're trying to be, you know, super mom. And, you know, even I coached football and baseball and was an entrepreneur the whole time. So you're continuously trying to, uh, do a little bit more. You're signing up for a little bit more than maybe what you ought to. And so I sort of given myself the permission to do less. And I think this book, Essentialism, um, talked about how that approach actually will help you to be more successful anyway. So I've, uh, I've wrestled with that as being something, trying to determine whether I agree with that or not, because I think there's aspects of that that... Uh, are sort of uh, overblown, but for me, that's the way I'm taking it, and so I am doing less, right? I've committed to less things in my life and prioritizing, uh, I'd say, fewer things, my family, uh, my friends, my community, and, uh, and, and in that are, uh, you know, my business partners and so on. So it's been a little bit easier for me to sort of put people in my life to, uh, to allow me to be obsessive about stuff, and... So I think uh, the one, so what I would say is carve out enough time to stay committed. And so I feel like I, uh, I've done that. I've given myself the license, right? I'm facing my guilt and now I've given myself the license to be uh, less than everything for everybody else. And I'm already, my wife would say I'm the laziest man in America. Other people would say, you know, he's a hardworking guy. 
I'm going back to being, hey, look, it's sometimes it's a little bit, especially when you're going through a major life change, which, like what I'm going through. So we have to give ourselves the license to uh, sort of break the old habits, get into some new routines. And that's got to be okay. You have to put people in your life that are sort of okay with you making those difficult changes because, uh, you know, hey, giving up my bad habits, it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. So luckily, you know, I've got, I've, I've given, I've made the decision. I've got the people in my life that want to support my decisions. Um, and that's been super helpful, but I've, I've given myself the license and I've carved out the time. And if you don't do that, I think you're destined to, to, to kind of not keep your commitment. And that's, uh, Nobody wants to, you know, not be accountable to something they commit to. So I feel like uh, I am going to be able to commit to this. I am going to be able to stay with it. I mean, I'm going on the air talking about it. I can't back down now. Yeah. So we've, we've talked about, you know, a little bit of the sleep and the exercise, um, you know, nutrition. I think there'll be plenty of uh, people in your community that can talk about nutrition. But you started to talk about, you know, the mindset, right? And so this commitment and you know, what you're exploring there. What else are you, you know, exploring with mindset? Well, I think the, uh, the mindset piece, um, is I think at 57, um, look, I, uh, I end up coaching other entrepreneurs, right? You and I both, we end up coaching, uh, the next generation of entrepreneurs. You built businesses, you've sold businesses. Um, and I think, there's no question that it all begins with the way success begins with the belief in yourself and the confidence uh, to commit. And so I think really this is no different than deciding to have the millionaire business partners in the backyard. Um, it's no different than the billion dollar dream I had with my security companies. Um, and it's no different than maybe any other uh, life change that you make. Um, I think it begins with the way you think. So for me, uh, I want more knowledge. Um, and every time I gain a little bit more knowledge, um, I, I'm slightly, uh, more informed, but I think the one thing that I would say is no matter what age you are, whether you're eight, 18, 57, I mean, having a beginner's mind to take my yoga instructors, um, thoughts more seriously, I think I'm built that way, and there's a there's a part of me that um, I, I'm happy that I don't think of myself as an expert in every realm. So I'm actually curious about how to do that. So in terms of the way I think, I've discovered something that I'm really curious about. I'm really curious about how to be more healthy in these four areas, and I think that curiosity it's one of the uh, gifts that I, you know, that God gave me, I guess, is uh, to be able to obsess. To me, I see that as a gift. Some people may say that's a big weakness. I see it as a gift. I think it's a gift to be able to, uh, to really be curious about things, right? So, um, so these things are helpful. So for me, it's like re, um, uh, re, uh, emphasize some things that are already sort of believed in. Um, and it's, re and I think for me, it's, uh, to, for me, any success that I've ever had at anything, it's about developing the confidence, whether it be in business or coaching football. It's like, well, if we have the confidence, we can go out and do this. Um, and I think for this, this is a, another, another example of I got just enough confidence to more fully commit, and now uh, I'm in on, uh, on this discovery process. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Uh, you know, there's so many, um, I'm sure my mindset is going to, uh, continue to adjust because I, I am really a beginner at this. Um, uh, but so is most of America. That's kind of the interesting thing. The people that profess to be experts about how to, how to get yourself to sleep or how to eat, eat right. I mean, half of them are wrong. So, uh, I'm happy being a beginner. I think that puts me in a great position to, um, be more accurate because my goals are around living a long time. And the things that we are discovering today, uh, couldn't have been imagined even five years ago. Yeah. I think to your point, you know, there's plenty of people that think they're experts or even, you know, espouse as experts, but it's, it's really about continuously growing, right? You know, it's that journey. You're not going to get to some 
destination where you say, great, I've checked all the boxes. I'm perfectly healthy. And so now I can stop. There's a, a constant growing process, a journey. And I think to your point, that beginner mindset of being hungry for knowledge um, will help continue to make you better each and every day. And one of the things I, uh, you know, I, I, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the podcast, but I met, I mean this as an overarching um, way that I think. Um, I don't want to be perceived uh, by anybody as somebody that uh, is judging other people. Right. We're all in our journey and we're all at different spots, whether you're you know, I, I don't judge people when it comes to entrepreneurship. Um, I hope I'm not the type of person that judges you based upon your appearance, uh, your uh, you know, how healthy you might look or or where you are at in your in your journey for health. So anything that I say, hopefully you recognize a vulnerability in me that uh, is um, not coming across as judgy because as much as I like everybody, if there's one thing that turns me off in, in other people, it's when they judge us when they don't know, they haven't walked in our shoes and they don't, and they're, and they're judging us. And so if, if I ever come across that way, um, I apologize and I, I would never want to, uh, portray my beliefs or my, uh, thoughts, um, that it would be right for everybody. It's, uh, it's one person's journey. It's an experience share versus trying to convert you to a different way of thinking. It's an experience share. And I, and I hope that's the way our show has been, uh, received over the last several years. Um, no matter where you're at in your journey, uh, we're sharing stories of how other people have battled and succeeded, um, hopefully I succeed at this and, uh, and hopefully that's inspirational to somebody, but it is no way, uh, to take away from, um, anything that any struggles that other people may be going through at the moment that, uh, that maybe I haven't walked, uh, through myself. Yeah. So we're getting to the point where we need to wrap. Um, and you know, like we've talked about, this is gonna be a normal track. You're going to have guests on talking about these topics, you know, you're, you're starting this journey, right? You're not, you're not at the destination you haven't, you're, you're looking to continue to grow and to, you know, like you said, be successful. But I think, you know, some of it is, is getting started and committing that, you know, helps you on that journey. And so as we wrap this episode and, you know, to your point about inspiring people, if, if people listen to this episode and they say, you know, I should be taking more care of my health, I should be committing in different ways. I should be exploring and, and having this beginner mindset. Would, would you say, you know, as a final thought that they should start with that personal vision statement that really that helps them with the, the roadmap and the story that they can, you know, anchor back to as far as this journey? Yeah, I think a, a personal vision statement, that's uh, almost like a dream, if you, if you will, like where you envision something, I, I, I think of it as a dream form. And, and I don't even know that, uh, no, I think the, the statement itself would be a, uh, a good start, a good uh, milestone, I'll call it, uh, uh, initial milestone. But I think it, you could start with just bringing it up for the conversation with somebody. Um, I don't think it has to be as big of a step as a, uh, a well-written uh, vision statement. I think that would be a good milestone um, for the beginning. But I think if you um, just had a conversation with somebody or you looked in the mirror and said, you know what, today I'm going to do something. A baby step, uh, I think, is a good way to start anything. Um, the one thing, whether it be entrepreneurship or uh, making yourself more healthy, you don't need the elaborate plan with the four uh, pillars like I have to take a baby step. A baby step could be something as simple as mentioning it to somebody that, uh, that cares about you. Uh, it could be uh, download a podcast. It could be something so small um, that it almost feels like um, a non-commitment, but it's a baby step in your discovery. So um, I would say, yes. Start with a vision statement, but maybe more importantly, start with any first step that makes you, that you, that you have the confidence to take on. And if it turns into a, uh, a vision statement, then God bless you. And I think start with a conversation, right? There's this element of shared experience. And so, 
Uh, thank you, Mark, for opening up and, and being, you know, humble and uh, transparent to share, you know, this experience. I think people will be inspired to come back to this show to share in that experience, and that can be part of, of their journey. So thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the, in the box below. And if you have a, a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.